In this video, we're going to look at what it's like to study at Cambridge University. This is part of a series where we're doing an entire university profile for each university that you can check out here. And we're going to help you understand all of the questions that you might have about what the course is like, what studying there is like, what student life is like, accommodation, basically everything that you've been asking us about on Instagram so that we can go through every university systematically and give you a fair profile on each of them so that you can choose where to study. So Cambridge University was founded in 1209 and to date is the fourth oldest university in the world. It is one of the most prestigious and the medical school always ranks pretty much in the top three worldwide every year. Cambridge University's medical department is renowned for its academic excellence and research facilities. Students that choose to study at Cambridge Medical School come out with firstly a very strong reputation and lots of support to develop their skills. So what's the medicine course actually like at Cambridge? Well, it is over the span of six years and it is quite clearly divided into pre-clinical and post-clinical years. So the first three being lecture-based where you learn about the sciences and research and then you go into hospital and beyond placement where you're seeing things firsthand on the hospital wards. So students are taught through lectures, small group teaching and kind of going more towards clinical placements towards the end of the course. One of the things that we're doing with these profiles is giving you an understanding of the reality of what it's actually like to be a student there. So we're getting lots of student opinions on things and what students tend to say about Cambridge is that the first two years are very intense. You can have up to three essays in a week to do and you're constantly doing what they call supervisions, which are meetings with your supervisor to check how you're doing and check your understanding of things. Students who have studied at Cambridge University's medical department often report that the course is rigorous but well-structured with excellent support from tutors and peers. They also praise things like the facilities, the research opportunities and the wide range of extracurricular activities that are on offer. And according to the Complete University Guide, the student satisfaction for Cambridge Medical School is 3.98 out of 5, so just under 80%, which is pretty good. So let's look at some important stats. Cambridge University's medical department is consistently ranked amongst the top medical schools in the world. As we said, usually in the top three most years around Harvard and Oxford, they're usually battling out between them. The university has an impressive research output with many groundbreaking medical discoveries made by its faculty and students. Again, according to the University Complete Guide, Cambridge Medical School's overall ranking is 100%, and then the score that they gave for research is 3.63 out of four, so really high again. So let's look at costs. So for domestic applicants, it's the standard 9,250 every year. However, if you are an international student, the fee per year can range from anything from £22,227 per year to £58,038 per year, depending on the preclinical years, which are cheaper versus the clinical years, which obviously require a lot more uh, involvement, whether you being in hospital, well, they will be a bit more expensive. If you are an international student and want to look at things like bursaries and scholarships, check out this video here where I talk about how to get those if financing is a difficulty for you. Also, our one-on-one -on -one coaching program has specialist branches for international applicants, grad applicants, and Oxbridge applicants. So if you want to find out more how we can turn those ridiculously slim odds of you getting into Cambridge Medical School into a much more favorable chance, check out this video here where we talk about exactly how our program has helped hundreds of people now get their place at their dream medical school and first choice medical school. So let's talk now about the application requirements. It goes without saying that applying to Cambridge Medical School is fiercely, fiercely competitive. But let's look at five areas where you need to either have the requirement or excel in to give yourself the best chance of getting in. So academic requirements are always a bit of a tricky area when it comes to applying to Oxbridge Medical School. Now, with Cambridge, they actually state that they have no specific GCSE requirement. But realistically, they are using those GCSE grades of eights and nines to point score and determine whether they invite people to interview. Now, they don't specify explicitly that you need all eights and nines if you're applying to Cambridge Medical School. However, if you think of the caliber of student that is already applying and that you're competing against, there are very few things that they can differentiate between students, and this is one of them. So if you aren't realistically getting eights and nines on your GCSEs, Cambridge might not necessarily be within your reach. That could differ depending on certain circumstances and maybe if you are a part of the widening access cohort, but otherwise, 
you may not want to use or waste one of your valuable med school selections. You've only get four options to choose from and it might not be worth putting one if you don't meet these criteria. Equally, for A-levels, you probably need two A-stars and an A to get in. Now, if you have international grades like IB, Cambridge will specify on their website what sort of cutoff they're looking for, but it's always good to speak to the universities if you have kind of less commonly known um, academics that are in the UK that are maybe not as common to us. The second requirement is aptitude tests. Now, Cambridge historically has always had the BMATs, the Biomedical Admissions Test, where you needed in sections one and two a combined score of around 14 to be in with a good chance of being invited to interview and then about a 3A if in the section three. However, it's really important to note that as of October 2023, it is the last time that they are going to use the BMAT as their official test. It is yet to be decided what they're going to do as of the next uh, application cycle. However, it is may be possible that they will adopt the UCAT instead or they might take something completely different. The third element is the personal statement, which again to varying degrees matters, but Cambridge still want to see good reasons for why you want to study medicine and they want to see that you are the right kind of candidate with the right traits and experience that shows that you are the right sort of person to be invited to their medical school. If you want to find out more about personal statement stuff, check out this playlist here, which tells you everything that you need to know to write a really good personal statement. As we said, they also want to see good Good work experience and they want to have a good letter of recommendation in your UCAS reference when you submit your application. One thing that's worth noting about Cambridge in particular is that they actually invite quite a high number of people to come and interview and do the majority of their culling after the interview process. And overall, the success rate for Cambridge is about 13%. So let's take a moment to look at the teaching style for Cambridge University. Cambridge offers very small class sizes in comparison with the universities. A supervision session taken by a doctor or professor typically contains three to four students and can sometimes even be one-on-one. -on -one. This makes the standard of teaching much more intense on an individual scale and offers excellent opportunities for specific questions and areas of interest for the students. The first three years of preclinical studies involve lectures, practical classes, including dissections and supervisions with typically 20 to 25 timetable teaching hours each week. The emphasis during the clinical years, so years four, five and six, is on learning in the clinical setting. So at the bedside, in outpatient clinics and in GP surgeries, which is supported alongside seminars, tutorials and discussion groups. One thing to note is that you are examine throughout what they call formative and summative exams. And as we said, you will have a college supervisor who will be reviewing your progress weekly and termly. Formal assessment, which determines your ability to proceed with the course, includes written and practical exams, as well as coursework submission and clinical assessments. So we talked a little bit about the course structure, but let's dive in a little bit more about exactly how the course is laid out. The course is structured to provide a strong foundation in both medical theory and practical experience, with an emphasis on developing critical thinking and problem solving skills. The approach to medicine taken by Cambridge is fairly unique, focusing more heavily on the scientific and theoretical aspects of medicine, aiming to teach the students the underlying principles behind the subjects they're learning. For the first three years of the six-year degree, there is no contact with patients, instead using the time for more detailed scientific studies. The terms at Cambridge Medicine are much shorter than other universities. They last just eight weeks and typically have double the workload of other medicine degrees. You will have to submit essays as well as work on scientific worksheets and presentations. So the all important question, what is it like socially and what is the nightlife like? Cambridge University is known for its vibrant social life and bustling nightlife. Students have access to a range of clubs and societies, as well as sports facilities and cultural events. The city itself is a hub of activity with plenty of cafes, bars and restaurants to choose from. Cambridge University is also home to a vast array of clubs and societies catering to a wide range of interests. And if that wasn't already enough for you, did you know that Cambridge has over 100 libraries? Not particularly surprising, is it? Students at Cambridge University can choose to live in campus or in the city. The university provides a range of accommodation options, including shared apartments and dormitories. So there you have it, everything you need to know about studying at Cambridge and particularly being at Cambridge Medical School. If you want to find out more about the other universities, I've made an entire playlist on each profile that we'll be adding to each week. So if you want to subscribe and turn on notifications, you can not miss out on any of those. Otherwise, if you want to know exactly the five steps that you need to complete to a very high level to get into medical school, check out this video here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those videos.